Shalom, everybody. Just came up to uh, my mind listening to the Word of God. And I noticed uh, lately, maybe a little bit because I've, you know, I had some disappointments uh, recently. And the Lord showed me and made it clear to me that, uh, you know, you, uh, you shouldn't want a lot of things. Wantonness creates disappointment. It sounds horrible, but yeah. The people that wait on the Lord shall want no good thing, the word says. Even our beloved David said, Lord, thou art a good shepherd. I shall not want. Wantonness does a lot of horrible things. To be satisfied in the Lord is a good thing. And it came up to my mind and uh, the spirit, you know, bringing the word uh, that I might understand this. This part came up in Matthew 11. And we'll read uh, from five to seven. But six is, is the point I'm trying to make uh, come across. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? This is a, another statement about all kinds of things. The people were basically also charged with uh, you know, wanting to see the kingdom manifested, you know, to restore Israel, you know to free it from the oppression of the Romans. And the Lord sees all this, you know, and he says, blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And, and you could be like, think it's like, well, Lord, I mean, you're beautiful. You heal people. You're the son of God. You gave me everlasting life which I need to meditate more because, you know, it's not really hitting completely, but eternal life with God. And what do you mean offended in you? And we know people offended in him, because, no. And we generally think you know, it's because he claims to be the son of God and they couldn't handle it and everything. But it's not only that, because there are parts in the Bible where they actually say, do the rulers really know that he's the son of God, that he's the Messiah? They kind of really knew, but they didn't want him. They didn't want the righteousness of God. They didn't want his way. I mean, when you have Israel, and that's us, by the way, okay? People that say, say you can't compare Israel with their, on the, the, the church these days, they don't really see it, but it's, it's horribly the same, <clears throat> but then the cross and salvation and grace in God, you know, that our souls are saved in heaven. That's a beautiful, the beautiful work of the father that is completed. That's different. Blessed be the Lord, the new Testament, but it's in mankind, it's in Israel, that so many times they just veered off God's path on the way they, th on the way they think. And they decided for themselves, as the word says, every man did right according in his own sight because you know the word of God wasn't so much around. Iniquity abounds more, there's more iniquity. People don't consult of the Lord. The priests do all kinds of horrible things. So people harden their hearts and everybody does what they think is right. 
plus be the spirit that moves in the soul of, a, of, of one that is redeemed when he calls on Christ in sincerity and repentance. But still, you know, uh, people generally do not, are not naturally, they're not uh, completely in tune to go in the way of God. You're an enemy. Okay. It sounds horrible, but God basically through Christ, I mean, look, if you look what the Son of God has to, had to experience to redeem the Son of Man, get it? And that's us. That what came upon him, that's, that's, that's you. Okay, so to say, like, I'm not an enemy of God. Yes, you are. Look what the Son of God had to go through to for you to be redeemed, to be reconciled unto God. And it's fine for me just to say this and for you to know this. But what I really like it to work, that cleansing truth that I am an enemy is in me. It's important that I, <laughs> I'm well established in the faith, especially for what's whatever is coming. And life, step by step, the Lord showing me, it's not that, you know, I like to think good blessings and good things, but step by step, God is showing me, yeah, you know, it's, it's not going to be easy, your life, God, and it hasn't been. And it's, you know, it almost seems like it's, you know, it's with the, with the circumstances even now and everything where it's headed, you know, it's really coming in. It's really starting to hit more. And I find myself growing, uh, you know, trying to escape something just, to, you know, like there's a rest for my people. Beware lest you enter not into my rest, the Lord says. You need to enter into that rest. And I find myself at the point where I like, I'm making strange moves. I'm making strange thoughts. I'm like, oh, Lord, you know, and it's really coming down to it that it's like, okay, now the faith, real faith part. I had a lot of words and the Lord showed me a lot of things. And I think I know a lot of things and God revealed unto me many, many things. I'm telling you, I see a lot. I see a lot too much. But it's really coming down to it that more and more w real faith is going to show. It's 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 going to come down to real having real faith. And I know I'm saved, but the Lord still has that part where He says, "He that overcomes the world," you know. So it's you with Him in you overcoming the world. Okay. And I find it horrible where I just invested my heart in, in, in some wantonness and I would like to make some moves. And I find myself becoming a reproach unto Satan. And it creates more strife in my heart, even towards the Lord. And I always had issues with meditating on his holiness and so, some jolts some things that hit it tries to keep me away from that pure intimate meditation on his holiness and, and his the vision of him not you know the, the shape or face but the vision and it keeps me back and I, I and I find generally my heart is creating a little more strife that now, when I hear the Lord say some things in his word, because many times I just put on audio Bible, King James Version, recommended very much. Yes. It's beautiful. You could just listen for hours and it's my, it's my, it's my go-to place, his word. It's my go-to place. It's the realm where I, he blesses me. And and then certain words of the Lord come up. Like in uh, Matthew to uh, 
explain it a bit more. Matthew 24, 10, 12. He's talking about to people, but he's also talking about people of the faith, you know, because of the false prophets and everything. Okay. He says, 10. And, there sh and then shall many be offended, and they shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall, shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I think we're at the forefront. It's, we're already seeing this, but this, this, we're still at the forefront of this, but it's coming. Many shall be offended of the faith. And, uh, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Now, let's continue. Because this is uh, from this is my uh, stepping point. We'll really, really hit off with the point I'm trying to make. Is after Zacchaeus, you know, uh, redeeming, and he says, "I will, I will pay back people what I uh, owe them." Is a, a tax collector, and you know, the guy uh, climbing up in the tree. It's beautiful. I like that part. And it's Zacchaeus, at your house, I will stay. And, uh, <clears throat> it's beautiful and uh, after a while after that he says this the people see that Zacchaeus well, you know he was a horrible tax collector and he just forgives them and everything and uh, but at a certain point Jesus gives this parable and it's at uh, Luke 19 12 he said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gave, gained by trading. Now the first, first came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well done, thou, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in very little, have thou authority over ten cities. And the second came saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities. And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art an austere man, that takest up what thou layest not down, and reapest what thou did, didn't not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taken up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow? Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might require, have required my own with usury? And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that hath ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. For I say unto you, that unto every one which hath shall be given and from him that hath not even that even that he hath shall be taken away from him but those mine enemies which would not that I should reign over them bring them hither and slay them before me I noticed in my own heart that because it seems like, I'm going to be honest, it seems like things don't really work out or, you know, because I have this wantedness of, you know, uh, being something, you know, uh, like everybody, every man in Christ, even, of course, every woman, 
You want to do something meaningful. You want to do something meaningful. And you create this want in your heart. What I noticed is that it creates sometimes that I read the Lord's words and I know I love him. And if, if a while ago I was feeling okay or, you know, less disappointed, I would read these words and I would, you know, like, yeah, Lord, I understand the parable. You know, you're this uh, intense uh, leader. This austere man, you know, that expects something of his servants, you know. It's like uh, you don't want your servants to be this, you know, lazy uh, servant. Wanted to do something with the faith they've given, they are given, and, you know, perform. And depending on where you are in your life, you might go up and down in that. And I find that there's a small little Thing that wants to come up and take offense in what the Lord says and the Lord has several of these passages that it could hit you a little bit you know when you don't uh, when you feel like it approaches you it, you know and many a times throughout my whole time of faith which is coming up to 10 years now I rejoiced in the fact that he could hit me with you know this because you, you, and many times, oh Lord, Lord, yes, and another thing in that Israel and the, and the certain sins they did, and I call them out those sins, and I repented with them, and everything, and Lord have mercy. But slowly and surely, I find myself, to, you know, taking offense sometimes in His word, and I hate that because I know, as as David said, "Thou art justified when thou speakest." And when thou judgest, the Lord is right. It's important for us, for me, to know that he's right. Not that I will easily lose that out, out of sight. That oh, I don't know if the Lord is that good. The Lord is good. He's been good to me. The Lord, you are very good. He's in me the spirit and everything. It is because out of wantonness, out of charged, being charged in my heart and my mind to be all kinds of things to work all kinds of things and to even still be my own savior or something like that. It's like um, he's given me these gifts of understanding and understanding the word. And yet I find myself in this place is like a uh, Where I just noticed that the wantonness really creates a, a, a breach of spirit. And as I repent of that, Lord, is the breach of spirit is what it is what it called. You open up and the, the Lord wants to seal you with his spirit tight. Tight, you know, like a jar, you know, filled with the spirit and just tighten it and just close it off. Like the Lord says, like a new wine. You know, you believe, you believe this the New Testament, like the new wine, new bottles, in new bottles, cap, cap them off and put them away for the, for the marriage supper of the Lamb, the good feast and the good wine he will drink. And he, like the Lord says, I will not drink of this wine until I come. The good wine you put away with faith. And that's what we are. We're set to be, to keep ourselves from the world, keep ourselves from wantonness, to be set away as a good wine for him to drink when he comes. So that's number one. I find myself a man that many great things many great thoughts all kinds of great issues like the apostles coming up to him oh who will be the greatest and all these things and the lord says be faithful in the little things okay we'll go to a
this is a good part and is uh, in Luke 17 7 to 10 but which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle which will say unto him by and by when he is come from the field go and sit down to meet and will not rather say unto him make ready wherewith I may sup and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken and afterward thou shalt eat and drink doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him I throw not so likewise ye when ye shall have done all those things which I commanded you say we are unprofitable servants we have done that which was our duty to do you could easily I'm telling you you could easily <clears throat> in a, be in a state of your life where you where you <laughs> you won't absorb this part of the Lord because this is a part of the character of the Lord okay he has that part where you are this servant and you and you can be disciplined as a servant okay and you think you've done all kinds of things and then you come expecting something and he's like oh wait a minute no 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 so and so and so and you need to do this and do with this still that but through out of it all the God, God wants us to do it with joy and love and kindness you know? it's a it's the part where he disciplines you into a servant of him where he just purges you time after time And know when this purging is happening, know that you're set to become a true servant. And it's a good thing to become the servant of the house of the Lord. Get it? Even though we're friends in Christ and sons of God, you know, no longer of the bond woman, the slave woman, but of the free woman. Blessed be the Lord. Might my soul really understand that more. say that we are unprofitable servants and we have done that which was our duty to do and i like i like more of this spirit my lord god that i just like a soldier like a servant and it's like that i don't know like than just to think like a servant as a son in power and might to for the gospel's sake but towards you lord as a servant is like yeah of course, my lord, and it's, it's that you and it, this is requires discipline. We live in the world. We live in the world, even by the prince of this world, Satan. Until the Lord comes and really takes his kingdom, what's already set out for him to take, he's uh, it's already reconciled unto him. From heaven's perspective, it's already reconciled unto him. Blessed be the Lord. But this is a world where it's you, it's about you. And even in school, they teach you, oh, you, you know, you get, you get grades, you get this, and you know, how, what do you achieve, and what is your achievements, and everything, and I am this, and I am that, and so on, so on, so And here, the Lord comes, and you can just be a servant in the house. Among many servants. Just glad to be a servant, like the lost son, the prodigal son. It's called, I'll, you know, uh, I'll, I'll make me as one of your hired servants. That's who we are. I've grown wanton, uh, and the Lord showed me. I've grown wanton really quick, just just because suddenly I find I need to go in the next phases of faith, and. And I'm thinking this and I'm thinking that and maybe should do so or maybe go there or over there you know in a short time span I traveled some kilometers <clears throat> actual kilometers
searching, hoping. But God didn't open it up. Oh, God didn't open a way. No need. He's like, he's like faith. If you feel that, if you feel that, the Lord showed me a little bit. I have to quickly find that part. It's it's basically in Isaiah, chapter thirty, the part where Judah in uh, Israel says we need to leave. You know, we can go back into Egypt because the enemy is coming. You know, and Isaiah is preaching. Ah, you say you need to, you want to flee. You know, in staying and in quietness and stillness shall be your strength. Get it? Now I'm not saying people should stay in their place, because you know there are a lot of signs that you would say yeah, it's probably good to slowly and surely make provisions, make a way to to live somewhere else or in communities or something. All these things, but I, that's not the discussion point of this at this point. The most important thing is to have faith. God many a times shows his wondrous works and his power in the place where we really cry out to him in, in, in true faith and in, in, in oppression even so I want to I, I want to be there but at the same time so it's it's I know it's this struggle now like we know but I'm afraid the Lord showed me so many things I know a lot of things God you know I understand him and he the, the spirit so clearly I feel him and Lord, you show me many things, and yet, just true, be still, you know, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, or even love not your lives unto death, you know, true faith, you know, it, it doesn't come that easily. It doesn't come that easily. And the wantonness just keeps us so in, 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 a, in a vicious cycle with ourselves. But it's not found in yourself. It's found in surrender. May God help us. Lord, help us. Unprofitable servant. It's because of the yeah on the on going back on it again it's like we're indoctrinated by this world that it's about you it's about you it's about you well me or you i am born without christ i was born to die and to be no more dust from dust you came and to dust you go that's the case here people we live and we see that that uh, harsh leader is an unprofitable servant you know basically says you wicked servant and several times the Lord has these these comparisons you know that he's this austere man this intense guy but we know he's loving we know where he went on the cross for us okay that he loves us And it's just also this time is that when you read these words of the Lord, you can sometimes it's those harsh parts is back then they understood it. They understood those things, you know, like the master and his servants. We now, we now, we don't understand it. Everybody's free. God, okay. God bless. Thanks God for the good work. In our forefathers and everything what he did in setting societies free more especially in the western world but at the same time is the danger now everybody has no greater cause than himself and we all like a greater cause than ourselves but still the power the 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 the, the mind the indoctrination level of the self what Satan put in us it's horrible it's a lot it's, it's a lot 
many, many Christians won't even get rid of it. And that's not a servant of the Most High. Me, me, and me. I need to become this and so and so. I need recognition in this and that. I need my place so and so. I want my life so and so. That's not the servant of the Most High. Matthew 23, 11 to 15. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go. Bev 14, 15, it basically goes on. This is where it goes. You can read 14, 15. Eventually, it comes to the point, a child of hell. If we cannot surrender and become these unprofitable servants, huh? if we understand that the Lord sits down first and we set his meat and serve him, then we, and even so the Son of Man came to serve, it's true, but there is this there is this discipline there is this order to the house of god he is still our master and the servant is not greater than his master so if he came to serve we serve if he came to suffer we suffer and eventually we all come to the like in in the likeness of the image of the son of god in which we in, in which adam was made from the beginning which we lost redeemed our redeemer blessed be the name of the Lord Matthew 5 chapter uh, from verse 3 blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Whoever exalts himself, wantonness is an ex oftentimes is an exaltation. Uh, I pray, Lord, that your presence and your goodness and, and the lively hope in you just satisfies our souls, Lord, that we want nothing. The people that wait on the Lord shall want no good thing. I find myself, my heart, making to wanting to making moves, strange moves. And it's just all the time. Bless your holy word. Be, you know, beware lest ye enter not into my rest. Be ye faithful, even unto death, 
not to speak of death so much that it's really upon us or something. <laughs> no, God is good, okay, and He will He will glorify His name. Lord, I just want to repent and ask forgiveness for the parts that really are just false faith. And that bit by bit, you show me all these things that, that are coming. And bit by bit, it shows me the lack of my faith. Lord, satisfy me with your presence. And take away this wantonness from me. And give me true, true, more, more true faith. Help us to forgive. Help us to let go. Help us to mourn and lament in in unto the deep and secret places that we can just give over the pain and the disappointment in all holiness Lord that we might empty us of everything that is unhonorable and fill us more with your eternal hope Lord and your satisfaction for we, are, for, for we believe in the Son of God Lord you are the centrum the center of the universe, of everything. If we have a relationship with you that is everything, where does wantonness come from? It has no place in the middle of a relationship with the true living God. So I ask and I pray in Jesus' name for us all. In Jesus, Yeshua's holy name, Lord, redeem us more and more from our fallen nature. And to truly come into the household of the living God fully in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In your holy name I pray.